Welcome to the Charlie Reed Show with your host, Charlie Reed. Lately, I have noticed online that in many articles, videos, and comments about a variety of topics, I'm consistently seeing the phrase, quote unquote, it doesn't make sense. And for some reason, it follows a statement or assessment that to me does make sense. Now, let me clarify. It's usually someone who is defending someone they like or a particular viewpoint that they agree with. For example, Kanye West has been in the news heavily lately, and there are, of course, many opinions on his behavior around the issues he is going through and his public response to them. I saw a comment online about Kanye, and in summary, it stated that Kanye is just going through what many people go through when going through a divorce with kids and custody issues. The commenter proceeded further to say that in the past, Kanye has for the most part been respectful to people and to give him a break. It doesn't make sense that he is getting so much backlash from celebrities and the general public. Now, I don't have an opinion on what's happening publicly with Kanye at this time, but this commenter is obviously a fan, which is perfectly fine, but has the commenter followed Kanye over the years? <sighs> The former husband of talk show host Wendy Williams, Kevin Hunter, has been in the news lately as well. And many people have given their opinions on an Instagram Live where he spoke to the public about many personal and public things about his life, his marriage, his divorce, and the effects of his divorce on his ex-wife and family. I heard a panelist on a YouTube channel say that it doesn't make sense that Kevin is being ostracized by the public just because he divorced a celebrity. Well, divorce happens all the time, so I'm sure that just getting divorced is not the reason people dislike a person. I don't have an opinion about Kevin Hunter or his divorce either, but the panelists may want to acknowledge that Kevin was unfaithful in his marriage, was living with his mistress and his wife in separate houses at the same time, and had a whole baby while still married. <laughs> now, I don't know the details of whether his cheating was co-signed by his wife. That's not my business. But I will say that the panelists left out some crucial information when making the argument that Kevin is essentially a victim of divorce shaming. And next on the docket, Jussie, Jussie, Jussie. Jesse Smollett was recently released early from jail after an appeal was granted on a case where he was convicted of staging a hate crime. His family has been very outspoken regarding their belief in his innocence, and the internet and news outlets have been buzzing with updates and breaking news regarding the status of his case and release. I read a comment on the internet the other day about Jesse's questionable innocence, and the person said, it doesn't make sense that Jesse would stage a homophobic hate crime. He comes from a great family who have been involved in the civil rights movement for years. I remember thinking to myself that even though it's unfortunate, Jesse's involvement and exposure to the civil rights movement and connections with activism actually makes his fake hate crime more plausible. He knows the impact something like an attack like that on a gay black man would incite those types of organizations to lend their full support. If anybody knew the potential impact, Jesse did. And last but not least, Cardi B just won her case against a YouTube vlogger for defaming her character with intentional misinformation about her and her family. I've seen many arguments online defending the vlogger she sued by highlighting many of Cardi B's vicious attacks on other people online. And I thought to myself, yes, and so that means other people who have endured the same defamation that Cardi experienced should sue her as well. Folks, this works both ways. I will applaud anyone who wins a defamation lawsuit. So that's it for the it doesn't make sense commentary. 
But I will leave you with this information that happened before Jesse Smollett was released from jail. NBC5 Online wrote, quote, The brother of Jesse Smollett, who was sentenced to 150 days in jail in connection to a state hate crime that occurred in Chicago in January of 2019, detailed the threatening calls their family has received since the former Empire actor's conviction. Quote, you know, we see a lot of hate mail online, on social media, and being a celebrity with a long history, Jesse's received a lot of hate mail, and many of my family members have received hate mail and hate speech directed toward us, end quote. <sighs> Jojo Smollett said in an interview with NBC5. However, he said the call his family received was different, calling it, quote unquote, very morbid sounding and pure evil in its message and intention noting the family's concern since Jesse is now incarcerated. Now, as stated before, this was a call that was supposedly received before Jesse was released from jail. I will only give the first few words of the call, which said, Hi, this is N-Word Lives Matter. And the caller goes on to say demeaning things about what will happen to Jesse in jail. My question is, in light of the hoax conviction, could this possibly be the caller? Or how about him? I mean, is there any way possible? Some will say no, it doesn't make sense.